You want to write a musical, or you started one, or maybe you even have one written, but you're thinking ahead. Because you actually want this thing to happen, live, on stage, in a full production. So, how do we get it there? Here are the six steps you need to take to get your show to production. Step one. Preparation. Depending on where you are in your show's development journey, you may have actually already done this step. But I bring this step up because, and I see this time and time again, if your preparation wasn't done with intention, or clearly, or with time, care, and quality, then you may end up backtracking to step one multiple times. Let's avoid that if we can. So what's involved in this step? First and foremost, you need to have a super solid idea about the story that you want to tell in this musical theater format. Now, I don't just mean knowing what the story is. I mean also knowing what your take on the story is, what music and live staging are going to do to uplift that story, why you want to tell this story, your audience's takeaways, all the things. If you want a quick way to get all this information decided, settled, and put in one place, I have a free PDF that you can download at the link in the description below with my North Star question sets. These are designed to provide you with all of the information that you need in one place that you can reference throughout the entirety of your show's developmental and writing journey. So I highly suggest it. Also within this preparation step may be the process of outlining or planning out your story. Sometimes people like to put this in step two so it really can live in either place. But the next part in this preparation step is asking the question, do you need to acquire rights for this story? And if so, do you have them yet? Too often I see people skipping this part of step one and then they end up in trouble or with a roadblock later on after they've done all of this work and put in time and energy, so don't do that to yourself, please. And lastly in this preparation step, do you have all of your collaborators lined up? And do you have everything covered that you need to have covered to make this thing happen? And are all the collaborators in alignment on the story that they're telling? Incredibly important. Do not skip out on finding and establishing quality collaborations between all parties on the team. You will save yourself some headaches later on. Step two, first draft. Honestly, there's not a lot to say about this step. Y'all gotta write the thing, because if it isn't written, there's nothing really to develop, let alone produce. The biggest takeaway here, though, is that this step is focused on writing, not rewriting or revision. And I know it can be incredibly tempting to rewrite and revise and edit as you go through the process of writing the first draft, because you want this show to be good, and no first draft is ever good. That's all part of the process, and you need to just let it happen. Let it suck you're going to make it suck less as you go through the rest of the process. And honestly, if you did your preparation work from step one, then this step should mostly be fun. I know that some parts of this particular process, like outlining or nitty gritty lyric writing or even melody writing can be tedious or frustrating, but if you did all your preparation work and you've got good collaborators and you know where you're headed, then this step can be an absolute blast. Step three. Find the story. This step is where we begin to have many potential paths that you can take depending on your show's needs. The first thing most writing teams will do during this step is to clean up their draft into an official first draft and then put together a home reading or a closed reading. What's the difference? Home readings tend to be done, well, in people's homes and only with super close friends that we know and love and trust with our newborn material. They often aren't even actors, they're really just close people that you trust. Closed readings are similar, they may not take place in your home, but this is where we are stretching our trust circle beyond our closest friends. Everyone invited is still there though because you believe that they would be honest and kind in their feedback, which is really what you need at this point in the process. These are the type of readings that we do most often in the reading series within the Musical Theatre Writing Collective, because I really love helping writers put these things together in a safe, affirming, supportive of environment so that they can get everything they need along this particular developmental journey step. If that sounds at all of interest to you, you can learn more in the description below. So why are we doing these types of readings first? Because when first writing a musical, it often takes a pretty long time to figure out what your story truly is, what is and isn't working, who your characters actually are, what is and isn't coming across, as well as any structural changes that might need to be made. This is usually 
usually where the bigger moments of revision tend to happen, especially if your structure needs to be reworked, tweaked, or revised at all. Does nitty gritty revision happen in here too? Yes, but the main focus here is on making sure that the thing that you've begun to write is actually telling the story that you set out to tell in the first place. See why preparation was so important? Often this means that there will be multiple cycles of this reading revision. Reading revision. Before you get the show to a place where you feel like it's finally doing all the things you want it to do. But once you are there, you can move on to... Step four. Focus on quality. Do not skip this step, please! It is so very tempting at this point in the process to skip this step and go directly to step five, thinking that you'll be able to focus on quality later on in the process, but you will probably not be able to. Have you ever seen a show somewhere and thought to yourself, hmm, I feel like it needed more time. It's not quite there yet. Yep, that's, that's this step, this one right here. Step four. Now that you have your story, your character, and your messages all working for you, it is time to dig in to the nitty gritty and to level up the quality of the show itself. The best way to do this is through development in formats that are larger than those smaller closed readings. This could, and usually does, include staged readings, smaller festivals, development opportunities with theater companies or with colleges, or even some workshops. The point of doing these is to receive feedback from a larger set of sources, like audience, performers, directors, musical directors, dramaturgs, etc. Now, not everyone providing feedback will be people that you know, like, or trust, which can trip some writers up and mislead them if your preparation work wasn't solid. Have I made my point on that yet? But seriously, I do see people and shows get stuck here in what I like to call the development loop. It becomes just staged reading after staged reading with no real improvements happening, just lateral movements and tinkering. If you can take in the feedback that you are receiving through the lens of what you need, then you can pretty efficiently make large improvements to your show as you revise, edit, and go through the process of revision. This step is your chance to make your show great, and I would urge you to not settle for anything less. But there will come a time when you eventually have to see the show more fully fleshed out off the paper and on its feet if you're going to continue to make it the best it can be. That means that we are ready to take the next step toward making that happen. Step five. Get seen. This step does not focus on rewriting and revision, but that doesn't mean that you won't be doing that throughout the step. You undoubtedly will, because you're smart and you want your show to be great quality as it gets onto a stage. Right? 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 Good. Okay, so what's the point of getting seen? Firstly, you're going to want to begin cultivating a name and a brand for your show. If potential production team members and audience are going to get excited about your show, they, uh, need to know that it exists. There are tons of ways to go about getting on people's radars, and I will mention some of them here. But honestly, I think the best thing that you can do for you and your show is to constantly talk about it. Don't be afraid of letting people know that you've written something and that you want it to be produced. You never know what might happen just from a conversation. Of course, don't push the show on people, but you do need to speak about your show because you are the best authority on that show. This is also a great time to dive into submitting your show to every medium and large opportunity out there that you can. The best resource I can offer is the Dramatist Guild resource calendar, which has all of the submission opportunities out there for you and links you to all of the information and gives you the deadlines for when things are coming up. Great opportunities to look for in this step, although that does mean that they're also the most coveted opportunities out there, are the big name festivals, the awards, and workshops that end with some sort of presentation. These are things that industry people do pay attention to, so aiming for these opportunities is a great way to get your show out there and be visible if you are lucky enough to get one of these opportunities. This could also be a great time to put together an industry reading in the hopes of bringing the eyes of possible producers, managers, and production team members to your project. Similarly, you could put together a concert of the music from your show to take place in a well-known venue like 54 Below or the green room 42. Not only does this get people to hear your music, you can also probably walk away with good video and audio recordings that you can then put on the intuit. Because it's also in this step that you may want to put together a website and or a pitch package. Having media that is shareable is a great way to increase visibility. You may want to make some high quality recordings, find ways to get some video, create a logo, and make a three page pitch package or a pitch deck that you can share 
out. And do not underestimate the power of your network to share all of this media and to talk about your show. Your network is one of the best resources you have and can even help you get to your first production but only if they know about the show. And once you've gotten yourself to a stage where your show has a presence, you may find yourself at... Step six, the big decision. Okay, you've done it all. The only thing left to do at this point for the continued development and forward movement of your show is to aim directly at a production. This means you have lots of decisions to make. And here are the questions. What kind and size of production are you looking for? Do you want a small regional production first? Will a college production work for you? Is an amateur production at all useful to you? Or are we only aiming for a big production? A production at perhaps a large regional theater or off-Broadway or touring, etc. Is this first production of the show a stepping stone of some kind? Or is the show ready to go directly into a big production pipeline? Where do you want this production to take place? Does it need to be done in a specific geographical location because of something inherent to the show? Or can it be done anywhere? Do you want to do this show within the United States, or does it make more sense to be in a different country? Who needs to produce this show? Are there specific commercial producers who you feel like need to be the ones to produce this show? Or is there a specific director or artistic director or nonprofit theater that you feel needs to have their hands on this show as it heads toward production? Do you need a management team to help you get producers and raise money? Or are you willing to self-produce? Or are you able to fully self-fund? Essentially, you need to know what your ideal production trajectory looks like as well as what the more realistic possibilities are. And once you know all of this, you can then use every resource at your disposal to help make that first production come to fruition. And every show's path is gonna look different, so you do need clarity on this for both you and your show. And if you wanna hear a full example of the path to production for one of my shows, Step by Step, then you should watch this video next. Otherwise, thank you all for being here with me today, and I'll see you again soon. Cheers.